Hi, my name is Lei Zhang, fifth year PhD student at Emory University. Today I'm going to talk about our work on getting the optimal data placement for heterogeneous systems. This is a joint work with Reza, my colleague at Emory, Irfan from Magnation, and my advisor, Emil. Data is operated on heterogeneous systems today. As in the traditional pyramid memory architecture, layers could be different in performances like cost, capacity, and latency. And even for adjacent layers, such difference could be in orders of magnitude. A general design idea for memory hierarchy is that hot data should always be served by top layers. So higher layers will first load data from the lower layers, as how cache does. In this way, the multi-tier caching problem can also be thought of as a data placement problem. So caching, a very interesting and important problem to look at first is the optimal caching for your workload. Optimal analysis is the offline form, however, very helpful for your online algorithm design. That's because the cache performance usually relies a lot on the workload patterns, for example, peaks or some sequential requests. And offline analysis can expose some hidden workload patterns which may not be obvious, but very helpful for your algorithm design. Besides, offline analysis can provide you the optimal bounds so that as system operators, you always have a sense for how much space is left before any further optimization. A classic optimal algorithm is the Bilodis mean algorithm. The general idea is to evict the object with the farthest future distance. Let's look at an example of a two-way cache and see how Bilodi works. When the object C is requested, it will check all the objects in the cache and see the future access of them. And you can see that A will be accessed later than B. So the cache will choose to replace A with the new object C. And later, when A is requested again, it will check the cache and find that B will not be requested. So it will be replaced with the new Coming A. The heterogeneous systems are changing a lot today. It becomes a trend that many new systems are memory based. For example, the RAM cloud, which is a storage system built on top of DRAM, and also some other distributed systems relies a lot on MemcacheD or Redis. An important property is that the performance gaps between those memory layers are getting decreased which is driven by many reasons. It could be driven by some new hardware, for example, the non-volatile memory or NVM. Even though we know the shining property for NVM is its non-volatile property, we look at some other performance-related properties, which is also commonly used in today's production systems. So if we look at the latency of NVM, we can see that it's already in the same order of magnitude as DRAM and way faster than SSD. It says NVM comes with large enough capacity to use and is directly accessible from CPU. The new trending is also driven by some new memory hierarchy design. For example, the non-uniform memory access, ANUMA, which considers the local and remote memories together. And also Lucaset cache is a new distributed caching design. Then let's step back and consider what should be the optimal for the new heterogeneous systems. We argue that Bilade comes with some assumptions. Firstly, on its architecture, all the requests are considered homogeneously. And also, it only considers two cache layers. However, in real world systems, requests could be different in many ways. They can have different object sizes or different in read or write. And also, real world systems are rarely consist of only two layers. They usually have multiple layers. Also, on the caching algorithm, Bilade would assume that each object upon requested must be loaded into the cache. And also the objective is the maximum hit ratio. However, we argue that these two questions should also be considered in the new heterogeneous scenarios. There are some previous works looking at the variable object sizes scenarios. However, in this work, we look at all the other points together. With all the backgrounds, now let's reconsider what should the offline optimal placement policy for heterogeneous systems. 
on in short, what is now optimal. In the rest of the talk, we will consider a one-way DRAM and VM model as the example, where DRAM would act as an intrusive cache of NVM. And we also assume all objects are initially loaded into the NVM's workspace. We ask the first question that if caching everything is always optimal, here with the given example trees, we want to see all the cache operations along the trees. We first look at an option we call the non-bypass option, which is the general caching options. That object would be loaded and get cache hits. And once the object is requested, it has to be swapped into the cache. Even though the next access would be on another one and it will be evicted out. We keep all the cache operations here for further comparison. But we consider another option we call the bypass option, which is that once the B is requested, the cache can choose to bypass it. So it will be kept in the NVM layer and get directly accessed from there then there will be another cache head for object A. Here, without looking at the detailed performance numbers, we have the sense that the bypass option might be better on performance, which drives out the power of admission control, saying that in optimal strategies, some objects should be bypassed. Here, for example, we have shown that the low frequency objects should be bypassed. But what about some frequent objects? Here we look at another trace example, we can see A and B are equally requested. But we consider the request type of them, which would be read or write. In this way, object A is first loaded into the cache, and when B is requested, it will be swapped and followed with some cache hits in the DRAM layer. This is how the non-bypass option works. But in the bypass option, once B is requested, the cache can even arbitrarily to choose to bypass all the requests and they will all be served directly from MVM layer. In this way, it's not obvious to show which of them is better. So we look at some other metrics. We first look at the traditional metric as the hit ratio. And we can see that the non-bypass option would have more cache hits than the bypass option. So does that mean that the non-bypass option is better? We propose that we should look at some other performance related metric, which can directly quantify the performance. Here we take latency as an example in our work. And with that, one thing we should look at is the performance asymmetry. Actually performance asymmetry already exists, but becomes considerable in new scenarios, especially for NVM. We first look at the latency of the hardware operations. Here, based on some recent measurement works on NVM, we normalize the numbers and show them as in the table. With that, we can also quantify the latency of cache operations, which would be groups of our hardware operations. For example, the cache load would be read from the NVM layer and write it onto the DRAM. With that, we can calculate the latency number of the two options. And you will surprisingly find that bypass option can even save half the latency than the non-bypass option. With all the interesting findings, we can conclude what should be optimal. The first way we need to consider the admission control, which we have shown that bypassing might be even cheaper than catching some objects. Then we should also consider the performance asymmetry a small accurate quantification on performance. And also we have shown that we should consider some performance related metrics, which can directly reflect the cache performance than some other previous metrics like hit ratio. With that reconsideration, we can now design chopped to solve our problem. Chopped, as in short of choice opt, is as far as we know the first work looking at the optimal data placement policy on heterogeneous systems. It considered all dimensioned questions above and provide a straightforward solution. The general idea of CHOPT is to cast the memory hierarchy into a network flow framework 
and then solve the present problem with graph algorithms. This has helped also provide some practical considerations for the real world use cases. When we first look at how to construct the network flow in Chopped. The design idea is that the network flow should represent how the possible cache behaviors. So how the nodes would represent object states at both layers. And also we add end nodes as source and sink of the network flow. Then all the edges would represent caching operations. Here we use different colors to show them clearly. The green edges would represent cache load and evict between layers. We use some other colors to represent the cache heat operations on the DRAM layer. And use black edges to show the bypass operation, or say the direct access operation on the VM layer. Finally, we add the pink edges as the source arc for node S and T. Here, a design idea is that from S to T, each flow path would represent a cache slot progression that would be initially empty, cache some object inside, hold it for serving it, and evict it out, maybe for some other objects. Chopped would consider a comparison baseline that all the requests are directly served by NVM layer. So for edge capacity, it will be related with cache operations. For cache load, evict, and hate operations, because they can only occur once at a given time point, we set the capacity as one. For the bypass operations, because we set it as a baseline, we set the capacity as infinite. And for pink edges, because each pass would represent a memory slot behaviors, we set it as the cache size to control the maximum number of flows. Finally, the edge cost would represent relative latency comparing with the baseline. Here for cache load and evict, they are reading their object from one layer and writing to the other. So here it will result in a positive cost. But for cache heat, then we are saving some latency in the baseline. So the number would be difference between the two layers regarding the read or write request. And note that here, the cost will be negative. For the black and pink edges, we will just set the uh, cost as zero. With the constructed flow, Chopped can just solve it with a mean cost max flow algorithm. Here, the mean cost, which is also our objective, is the maximum saving on latency comparing with the baseline. And the mass flow would mean the maximum usage of the cache. For example, if we set cache size as one, chopped will find the passes as shown, which is cache the object A at the beginning and serve it and finally evict it out, which is just a memory slot behaviors from S to T. Even though we set cache size as two, chopped will look at all the possible solutions and find that any of them that catches B into the DRAM layer would result in some positive cost, which means that that's even more expensive than the baseline. So it will still choose to bypass object B in the final results. To this point, we have shown that Chopped can generalize the optimal strategy by considering all the assumptions we asked before. We have shown how chopped can work on two layers. Let's look at how to extend chopped onto multiple layers. Firstly, the general idea for memory hierarchy is that top layers are still more valuable. So our objective is still to maximize their usages. We firstly add the green edges between each pair of layers to fully consider all the possibilities. And then we set the capacity as the available top layer capacity. Here, the top layer would be L1. Then we run chopped for some optimal strategies. Here, the strategies would be locally optimal for the top layer, but not for all the other layers. Then we remove the top layer with all the nodes and edges and keep all the residuals in the graph the same. And if there's still one more layer, we should go back to the step one. And here, the L2 becomes the top layer. We set the capacity as the available L2 capacity, which is its original capacity minus the already used capacity. And we run chopped again, 
to get a locally optimal solution for L2. Here, by putting all the passes together, we get all the solutions that will maximize the usage of all our memory layers. We have shown that chopped can work as an optimal strategy. However, there's another practical issue that the constructed network flow could be very huge. The complexity is related with the number of requests, and for real-world workloads, it could be even billions, which means naively running the mean cost mass flow algorithm could be too slow. To solve that, we apply spatial sampling onto our workloads. Here is an example showing the difference between temporal sampling and spatial sampling. We can see that since spatial sampling would sample based on the objects, it could expose more valuable workload patterns. And as shown in many recent works, the caching metrics, for example, the mid-social curves, could be very robust to the sampled workloads. We also provide a theorem that spatial sampling can approximate the catch performance of the original workload very accurately. To solve that, we firstly prove the theoretical error bound in a shell of style tail bound to show that the error on the spatial sampled workloads could be controlled within a limited range. And besides that, we run some practical experiments to show the accuracy of that. Our theorem would resolve an open question in the cache literature, that is how spatial sampled workloads could still reveal the original workload patterns compared with the original workloads. Given the time limitation, I would keep more details in the paper. Finally, let's look at the evaluation of chopped. We, we apply chopped onto multiple types of workloads as shown in the table. Here, note that the runtime for each workload could take about one to two days, which is actually competitive with the previous workload, which can take about 250 million requests per day. We still consider the DRAM and VM model in our experiments. We compare chopped with some offline algorithms, for example, the Bilodis algorithm as the original. And to make it more competitive, we relax Bilodis algorithm with a low in the admission control of that. We also compare chopped with some online algorithms. First, we compare it with the LRU, which is the most commonly used algorithm today. And also we compare with the state-of-the-art admission control policy called the window 10 FU. The table shows some basic properties of those algorithms. And because we find that no previous works consider the performance asymmetry, so we add another comparison where we set the NVM read latency the same as write. Here are some general results of chopped performance. We take the relative latency improvement as the metric to evaluate how chopped can provide the performance gap over some other algorithms. Here, as shown in the table, each bar would represent a workload and different color would represent different sampling rates. From our result, it's shown that chopped can provide better performance than any algorithm we have chosen on all our workloads. We also want to evaluate the sampling accuracy of chopped. Here, the red dot represents the theoretical error bound as proved in the paper. With that, we have shown that chopped can provide very accurate results, even on the spatial sampled workloads. So in this talk, we first look at how the traditional optimal placement is outdated under the new heterogeneous system scenarios. Then we reconsider what should be the new optimal by considering a lot of points. And with all those assumptions, we provide chopped as a practical method for the optimal of the analysis. I encourage you to read our paper for more exciting details, including the spatial sampling theorem proof, some more experimental results. And besides, we also provide some heuristics and interesting discussion around how to do your online algorithm design for caching. Thank you.